The Chargers, uh, no problem against the Bears. Uh, how did that happen? Yeah, Bears. I know that was uh, that was pretty interesting. Thirty to thirteen matchup. Uh, yesterday, right around the second quarter, Gilbert had a huge smile on his face, and I was like, "Oh wow!" I'm like, "I don't know what that smile is all about." And then he hung out with me for a couple minutes, so I think uh, I, th- I think he does love me. So uh, obviously, it was uh, it was good to see you. That's why I enjoy those uh, those Charger games. I mean, obviously for everything that we do, but on top of that, I get to hang out with you and and chat with you and everything. We we live kind of at a distance, so it's cool to kind of get together and and chat a little bit but uh what did you i mean sunday night football yeah i, I know a lot of people are questioning why keep this game on sunday night football yeah. uh were you one of those oh, oh for sure it was a, a boring atrocious game to watch but i'm sure for Chargers fans it was a nice game a, a welcome game to watch where it's you know a lopsided victory for the chargers not the other other way around not a one score game where you're freaking out you're stressing out so i'm sure it was a welcome change of pace. But speaking of pace, Fernando, you know, it got so boring and out of hand that, you know, I, I started pacing around the press box. I'm like, hey, Fernando, you want to talk to me when most of them I'm, I'm busy? Leave me alone. Don't talk to me. I got to write on deadline. It's like, what are you doing over here, man? Like, oh, oh, you want me to take a video of you of, with Justin Herbert? I gotcha. So things like that. <laughs> yeah, that was actually a pretty cool video. I appreciate that. I gave you proper credit, obviously, uh, as as one should do. But yeah, I, I just thought it was an interesting, uh, I mean, if, if you're that's that's why I've said like I understand some people are kind of like well why is this game kept here the Chargers are the most interesting team in the NFL like their games are always something's gonna happen so uh, I guess last night my theory uh, wasn't right but I mean the one thing that did happen Justin Herbert was nearly perfect the the whole game he did a, a lot of good things a lot of good uh, passes I mean I know everybody's gonna talk about there weren't really that many passes past nine yards and everything but it was, I mean, you, you have to find different ways to win. They found a different way to win yesterday. A lot of it was uh, throws underneath the Eckler. Eckler had like 90, uh, like 96, 94 yards receiving. Uh, Keenan Allen had eight for 69 or Jason, whatever you want to call him this morning. Uh, Gilbert, the big part was Quentin Johnston got involved. Yeah. Uh, on that drive, on that two minute drive. They went, uh, Justin Herbert found him three times. Well, and one of them, he evaded uh, about three tacklers. That was pretty impressive because that's what you had heard this whole time about Quentin Johnson. That's what you had heard from TCU. Like the way this dude is kind of able to to slither away from from uh, defenders is pretty interesting. And, w- and we got a, a front row seat to it uh, on Sunday night. Maybe this is a, a thing of uh, or a foreshadowing of things to come. Yeah, you know, I, I know people are going to say, well, it's the Bears and it's Tyson Badgen. Uh, Bears. Is it Bajan or Badgen, right? Badgen. And he came down to earth. You know, he, he, he didn't really do much. The Bears didn't do much as a whole. But it was one of those games where, like, it was a get right game. Make sure everybody, you know, the ones that have struggled, make sure they get right. You know, you haven't had Corey Lindsley offensive line, better performance, get right. Oh, no, Mike Williams. All right, here we go, Quentin Johnson. This is your game. Get right, Josh. Uh, uh, Joshua Palmer and on a little banged up, but to see him hop off like that and come back, tough dude right there. And then Justin Herbert just needed a, a game where like the finger wasn't bothering him. I know you asked him for the thousand times about the finger, but he looked great. So it was just one of those games where everybody just felt good. Even Keenan Allen talking to you in the Jason mask, like that was pretty cool to see. Yeah, it was a lively environment, and they needed something to kind of pick him up. And Fernando, I've been critical. You've been critical. I think my guy, Athir, in the comments thinks that I've been too critical. We'll find out what he wants to talk to me about. But they have hope now. Chargers have hope. They're back in the race. I don't know if people want hope. But, hey, the wild card, 7 seed, 6 seed in the AFC, not out of reach just yet. In a big-time game against the Jets on Monday Night Football. Athir, I, I don't think that's how it works anymore. Uh, you're talking about the flexing. No, they can start flexing. They started flexing from week six. They just haven't flexed any games yet. I, Yeah, that's right. Right, Gilbert? Like. They yeah, kind of started flexing from like week four, week five, something like that. Yeah, I think they changed the rules, but I, I'm not 100% right. But is that really the problem you have with me at the year that I criticized the Chargers being on prime time? It was more about the Bears. Like Fernando said, the Chargers have intriguing games, but I don't want to see Tyson Badgett against Justin Herbert on prime time. And I was proven correct. That was a, a snoozer. But I know for Chargers fan, it was encouraged and they liked it. They want more of he those. He said no, sir. <laughs> all right keep it going then but he's I don't going he's go, he's going the Thule route uh calling you sir uh but it, it it just like you said like they needed to get right game this is a game that can make i mean this victory could either or this game was going to make or break their season i think 
Uh, cause moving forward now, I mean, you, I mean, they're, they have a six, a tough six game stretch. And I told you last night when you graciously jumped on for Dan and Dago, who, uh, was trying to navigate himself through, uh, he said that the in and out line supposedly was about an hour and 15 minutes long. And, uh, he decided really? to go to, yeah, he decided to go to Chipotle and he's like, I don't know how you can eat that crap. I'm like, oh, you didn't like it? He's like, no. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, Chipotle's good. He's like, yeah, right. It was trash. So I, I just started laughing. I'm surprised you didn't see him in the parking lot uh, when you left. Like, I told him, I'm like, you didn't see Hilberto? He's like, no, I didn't. He's like, did he pass by? I'm like, I'm pretty sure he did. I don't think uh, the Chargers give him red lot uh, and make him no, pipe, I went so. through the, the, the long way or the PS1 way. but I, I didn't see him. And, and speaking of Chipotle, Fran, they're like, Chipotle is not great but sometimes it just gets a job done and like that's what the Chargers needed again like the chipotle was the bears right you go in there and you eat your food you handle your business and you destroy the bears and you destroy the burrito bowl and you move on but it's not great it's not an amazing food but no no brother had to do what he had to do yeah yeah no it's it i mean honestly it's white people food like it 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 really is i mean hi uh hi from (laughs) santiago chile uh it it's actually really um (laughs) <laughs> Morgan says they're heartbreaking games. I mean, yeah. yes and no. I mean, there's times where they're they're in it and they they have a chance. I mean, how many times haven't we seen them compete against the Chiefs? I mean, I know it happens late in games, but I mean, at one point, your luck has to change. I mean, why not uh, starting now? But yeah, no, I, I just thought it was a good game. The only thing is, Gilbert, and I, there's two things I harp on. Third down defense yeah. is still a problem. The other thing I kind of harped on was the running game. They couldn't get yeah. it going. And that's been a big problem. I mean, I know. And the problem is everybody kind of wet their beak a little bit with that first game where they rushed for all those yards. And ever since then, I mean, it, it just hasn't been the same. Uh, but the one, another positive that I think is yesterday, Austin Eckler finally looked like the Austin Eckler pre uh, high ankle sprain. So he was running he, for that 39 yard uh, touchdown. I on I'm not gonna lie, I didn't think he was gonna make it. Like I thought he was gonna get like hit at the 10 or, or something, and then we're gonna have to go down and, and he turned on the Jets and I was like, Oh wow, okay, there he goes. Like that that's a pretty I mean, obviously it's not he was like so shifty. Like the what's that game? It's like the one with the frog in the middle of the freeway and he has to like move around. Oh like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Like exactly. the frogger, yeah. Like that was that was Austin Eckler, man. I'm like, you know, I know he's not old, but that was vintage Austin Eckler. Like when he's a threat in the passing game and the running game, and he's breaking tackles, shifty. He's a small dude, but he's strong. Uh, one of the pound for pound strongest guys in, in the in the locker room, which is Anthony Lynn. What he he called him that back in the day. Twenty nineteen feels like a long time ago, Fernando. But when Eckler was at his best as a versatile yeah. running back, that was kind of giving me like throwback Eckler when he was doing the shifting. And so that's what you need, right, Fernando? When you're missing Mike Williams and you still have young guys trying to find their way, like a Quentin Johnson, like you need him to step up in the passing game. But I'm with you. I have concerns about that rushing attack, like. Joshua Kelly provides glimpses of, of being a decent quality back. But if you're asking Austin Eckler to do more in the passing game, you better step up as a running back. I know the tread deadline is coming up uh, what, 1 p.m. Pacific on Halloween. I don't expect any moves. You don't either. But it'll be nice to get a bruising running back somehow. Maybe with Derrick Henry, but he, I don't think it's going to be available. Yeah, no, I understand. The screens are kind of like yeah. the run game, but, I mean, you can't depend on them moving forward because it, it's going to be tough. Gilbert, plot twist. Cardinals head coach Jonathan Gannon told reporters that either Kyler Murray or rookie Clayton Toon will be starting against Cleveland on Sunday, not Josh Dobbs. Wow. So uh, that's a real, that's a big plot twist right there, uh, to say the least. Yeah. Um, I mean, Call of Duty or, or a tune? What are you going to go with? I yeah, mean, suppose that Call of Duty is going to drop in a new game and people are concerned about it. But uh, I would be concerned too. But, but lastly, uh, before we uh, before we move on from Chargers talk, if you guys want more Chargers talk, we get into it yet yeah, last night on What's Up Bolts. Uh, make sure you go check that out. Gilbert graciously stepped in for Dan and Dago, who uh, who went to uh, the game with our cousin and. And uh, he was trying to find food after. It didn't bring me anything again. Uh, <laughs> so that was kind of a shame. I had to stop at in and out at like 12 midnight. We got so much traffic in Oceanside. I was like, you know what? I'm freaking starving. Like, I need something to eat. The food was terrible yesterday at SoFi. Oh, so, man. So uh, <laughs> I needed to stop. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> well, before I give you my input on the food real quick, I just want to let people know, uh, the listeners and viewers of here, Compass on the Beat Live, if we move on to a different game, you can still ask questions about the charge. We're going to stop. Ask yeah, we'll jump back. Here. That's fine, too. I, I want to hear questions and be engaging. 
Uh, but and I, I love you too, Athea. We have a a good back and forth uh, love hate relationship, but all love, you know. I don't I shouldn't say hate, the, but go ahead. The Jets defense will bring it on Monday. They are not afraid of Herbert. How important? Oh, for sure. Defense bringing. Oh, this one hundred percent. And we'll get into. You know what? We'll get into Chargers Jets a little bit more when we talk about the Jets coming up uh at the year so uh make sure we uh we'll we'll jump into that um and, and real I, quick Brando, on the review of the mexican food at sofi state on press box yes it was terrible but one of the sweetest ladies in the press box who helps oh, out yeah. and they're cleaning really and, nice. and doing the food she was like you she should try and i kind of like all right fine i'll do it it was the chile rellenos and i like the cheese and i'll leave it at that <laughs> it was uh, a mistake on my part but i wanted to be nice and you were the the person that made the right move of not trying it, but uh, they had the malas um, with cheese. I don't know what they were fascinated with cheese, but uh, yeah, whatever that was yesterday, I, I wasn't a big fan of just to give you well, my review of the SoFi Stadium press box. Well, I mean, and the thing is, is that I mean, you're you're kind of hoping that it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be good or whatever, and you're kind of like, oh, oh like, mm, I don't know, I, I was kind of hoping for more, but you know what's funny, uh, Gilbert, speaking of the food there. Uh, I kind of asked the people at SoFi, I'm like, hey, do you guys have video of Gilbert heading to the bathroom as soon as he ate that chile relleno? They're like, dude, <laughs> we got you. Joan Trip. What oh, do my you have for me? Cool. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I can't say it. S-break. There you go. <laughs> it's a from American Pie. <laughs> I had to do that one. But, uh, but real quick, Gilbert, uh, <laughs> The trade deadline, as you said, is on Halloween Day. Do they make a trade? You know, when you're Part of the when, deal. You, when you won the game like that, and you look at the standings, and you have a a, a big time game in, in New York City or not New York City, New Jersey, wherever they play, East Rutherford, uh, MetLife Stadium, and you could beat the Jets, you probably you're, you're probably looking at a seven seed already, and you're back in the playoff mix. So, like I mentioned on on What's Up, both thank you for letting me appear on your amazing show, Fernando. I'm like, it's now or never. Like, this core group is probably their last year. So, why, might as well just do it. And again, Tom Telesco, year 11, no AFC West titles. Brandon Staley struggling in his first two years and a half as a head coach. Go all in. Just do it. It's, a, it's okay. The Eagles do it all the time. Like, you know, and, and one thing they should probably remember, like, Fernando, a year ago, the Chargers were struggling until they had that amazing December, right? Like, things could change so quickly. And I know I was the most critical person last week. But you won the game. You handle business. The standings are working out for you. Make a move. You can't let the victory on Sunday overshadow the fact, like Dan and Dago said, you were playing the Chicago Bears. You're going to need reinforcements. You're going to need something. I know people might think, oh, uh, if you go, like we said last night, if you go get a DeAndre Hopkins, like that's going to hurt the development of Quentin Johnson. No, it just gets in another vet savvy veteran who could help him along the way. Um, I know what he needs is like to catch and or to get more passes. I mean, that could open it up for him. And like Gilbert said last night, Joshua Palmer is banged up. Um, so you're gonna need another guy out there. So I mean, we'll see. I mean, the, the defensive, the defensive line, cornerback, safety. Um, I mean, offensive line, I just don't think you can make a trade during the season to kind of help that out. But receiver, I mean, even tight end. I, I really do think that if I mean I know Donald Parham played well last night I was actually really impressed with him, but I still think they kind of need a little bit more umph. Um, but I, I I really do think cornerback safety man just another safety would be uh would do, I, and I know people are really high on Alohi Gilman and and Dean Marlowe and everything but I I just I think. Yeah. <laughs> These people Daniel are tough, Hunter, Fernando. Daniel Hunter and uh, yeah, right, and Buddha Baker. I Gilbert mentioned that one last night, but I would just be very surprised. I think uh, I, I'd be very surprised if that happened. Uh, Morgan, honestly, I have to disagree. The overrated part, I know you're, but that's the thing. You're looking at the product now. Like, remember, people thought RG three was way better than Andrew Luck, and Andrew Luck ended up. I mean, obviously, both of their you're careers are way back. Yeah, well, I mean, okay, I'm just I think to say Mike people thought Mike Williams was the bus and he was a mo well, yeah, okay, the there, yeah, Mike Williams, the everybody thought Mike Williams was the bus. Hey, I was around the team in 2013 when everybody thought Keenan Allen was a uh not a bus because he was a third round yeah. pick. He had the first round potential, but he dropped because of a knee injury. Everyone was saying because Keenan did not start in his first two games, he didn't he didn't even I don't even think he suited up against the Houston Texans in week one when they got turned around and, and uh they, they were up twenty four to zero. 
It was Tom Telesco's first game as a GM, Mike McCoy. They went into the halftime 24-0. Texans come back, beat them 28-24, something like that. It was crazy. Uh, that was the famous uh, same old story. Um, but uh, but people thought that those guys were busting. Look, they've all turned it around. They've done some good stuff. So I'm not going to, after six or seven games, I'm not going to go on a limb and say that he's overrated. I still think that Quentin has a good head on his shoulders. He said yesterday, today was a building block. This is about moving forward and building on this. So I'm really impressed with the kid. I'm not going to call him overrated yet. Um, so yeah. I let me just, say this, um, this yeah. here on the, on the offense is not the problem. My thing for a big time game with the Jets, and it's probably just looking at the one game coming up. You know the Jets won't be able to score that many points. And I get the Chargers defense has been pretty bad, but we know what's going to happen with Zach Wilson. It's going to be, you know, 14 whoa, whoa. to 17, maybe 20 points. I know he's your guy, Fernando, but the, no Char time. the Chargers offense better score some freaking points against that very good Robert Sala defense because I, I think that game is it has a lot of implications to either you're going somewhere or you're okay. not. So that offense really needs to be on point. But you're right. I, I know the Jets are feeding off of like watching Aaron Rodgers warm up before the game. Oh, yeah, they're seeing I that. think the Jets are feeding off of that every single I, game. I didn't believe you when you were saying, yeah, he could come back. I'm like, yeah, sure. And then they, they have life. They're, they, you, you've been this on week, it. he was actually like, 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 you know, when who was when Russell Wilson was hurt with his hand a couple of years ago, I remember he went out there and did a fake simulation. Like Aaron <laughs> Rodgers was doing that yesterday. And I was like, damn, dude, like you're you look like you're literally a month away from being back. And if they could, uh, if they can, they can get it going. I mean, they're going to be impressive uh, moving forward, but Joshua Dobbs get traded. I don't know. I, I wonder if the Vikings make a call because of Kirk Cousins, oh. but I don't know. That'd be kind of tough to get traded again and start again. You know, that sucked for Kirk Cousins. Cause you know, he bet on, on himself. He's a free agent after this year. Um, I, I, I was kind of of the mindset of this Brock Purdy thing starts, keeps on going South. I thought he was good. Kirk Cousins could be uh, could be the ghost. But yeah. who are you gonna call Ghostbusters? Kirk Cousins. Uh, real quick, Morgan said we can agree to disagree. He played one side of the field at TCU and he didn't know the playbook. Yeah, but I mean, there's always criticisms. Yeah. I mean, with Mike Williams, it was the neck and that he uh, he wasn't a big time uh, receiver and well, that all he could do was down the field stuff. And I mean. That's well, just always that's the thing. Like that's kind of probably well, maybe I feel like Mike Williams was more, you know, developed and he had injuries. But I was gonna say with, with Quentin Johnson, like a lot of people are saying this guy is really good, his skill set is amazing, but he's just not ready yet. And maybe that could be the real thing. Like that upside, that potential that you bet it on, it just probably is gonna take longer. And like you like you were saying, friend, like they already had Mike Williams and they had Keen Allen, but you gotta think about the future about with Justin Herbert. And I think it's, it was this was more of a pick for the upside, and yeah. now he's being asked to contribute more. And it's maybe it's a struggle, but yesterday was fine. It was encouraging. I don't know. Yeah, Mike was more dynamic. I mean, yeah. Well, not his first year. His first year, I remember he was getting dragged through the mud, but that's because he had that back injury. Uh, Pala Palamont, uh, for our for amigo from Chile. I sacrifice my selfish tribute. I will date Selena <laughs> Gomez for the good of anybody, whoever needs that good. I will date Selena Gomez. I got it. Don't trip. I volunteer as tribute. I'm that guy. I will date Selena Gomez for the good of this team, this wow. country. Whatever you guys need, I'm your man. I will date her. So I'm I'm all good. I, I see that's what I am. Yeah. I'm that type of guy. I'm 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 willing to sacrifice myself. Yeah, for... it could have been a great storyline for the Sunday Night Football broadcast. Uh Selena Gomez dates Chargers B reporter, and it could have been a whole storyline, you know. But I mean, I'm they, just they saying missed, they missed the boat. Hey. Well, Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift, that's old news. Like, let's let's move on to this. I got you. Uh <laughs> I, Morgan, I appreciate that. I appreciate that so much. Yeah, I try and be. I try and be. I'm just saying.